So good afternoon. Um, my name is David Lafkus here at the Eureka Ranch and I uh, welcome you to today's Innovation Engineering webinar. And today we're gonna talk about how to file a copyright application and kind of show you how easy it actually is to do. Um, I do wanna point out that um, if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, there is a place there uh, to put in questions during the webinar in your GoToMeeting uh, queue on, the, on probably the right side of your screen there. Feel free to type those in, and um, if I can, I'll get to them while I'm talking. Otherwise, I'll get to those at the end. We'll have some time to go through that. So uh, let's kind of go through a little bit about intellectual property um, in regards to where copyright falls in that. And under the term intellectual property, we have patents, trademarks, copyright, and trade secrets. And here at the ranch, we talk a lot about patents. So that's what our definition of meaningfully unique is. So we're always pushing that. Trademarks we're doing as well, because you gotta name your products well. But copyright kind of seems to be forgotten, not only here at the ranch, but in actually most of intellectual property. And part of it is that I can tell you in my field, it's a little bit of, not a money maker to actually file copyrights. And it's, there's no easy way to search whether or not anybody has the same exact copyright out there. Uh, whenever you file for a copyright, it goes into the uh, US Library of Congress and it's incredibly difficult to search there. You usually have to go and pay somebody who does so. Um, so when it comes to copyright, uh, most of the money in the legal field is more on suing infringers later. So. Um, that's one reason it's kind of often forgotten. The other issue is that it seems like it's so easy just to steal things anymore. You can go on the internet and you can copy pictures all the time. You can download music and videos and oftentimes people kind of think, well, because I can do it, it must not be illegal. I will tell you it actually is illegal to do, um, even though you can do it. So a lot of that really doesn't come up uh, in for thinking it's a very sexy type of intellectual property. So copyrights protect original works of authorship. So as long as you are the one creating it or your company, you can file for protection for it. Uh, you couldn't go and take somebody else's work and file it just like you couldn't do that with patents. Um, you don't actually have to publish what you've created in order to get protection for it. So you can actually write something up, even say if you're taking some notes today as I'm talking, because you're not publishing those, you can still get protection for them because they're yours and you're creating them on your own. And what's really kind of cool about copyrights, um, and this is the same as with patents, is that copyrights are actually called out in the US Constitution. And so the, the rights are there under federal protection. You can't do this at the state level. And if you remember last month, I talked about trademarks, and I mentioned during that that you can actually file for trademark protection in different states. You can't do that with copyrights. There's only one place to file for that. So we'll go through that today. So before we really get started into you know, even actually filing, we gotta talk about what can you actually copyright. So there's actually a long list of things. You can do literary works, you can do dramatic works, musical works, artistic works. So think of like paintings and statues. Uh, computer software, you can actually protect the code. Uh, architecture, so you can actually protect your blueprints. So, you know, like I went out to Montana and took a picture. I could go and file this as a copyright. I took that picture and so it is mine. Here's a picture of my dog, same exact thing. You can make Domino famous and get a copyright on her, this actual photo of her. Or the ranch here. I went outside and took this picture of it. Great looking day here. And so I own this actual photograph because I took it on my own time with my camera. Um, but then if the ranch wanted to, we could go and protect the architecture of the building. So Doug designed this and obviously been changes over the years to the building, but we could actually protect it so nobody else could mimic the same exact place. This is really important and this is often lost, is your copyright protection only protects the expression of the work, so not the idea behind it. So especially with literary works, think about whenever you write something, you're gonna write it a little bit differently than somebody else. So you only have protection in exactly how you've written it. So today's presentation, I could actually take this slide deck that I'm going through right now and file this for a copyright uh, protection, but I'm only gonna pr get protection for exactly how I put it together. 
And so you might take the same idea behind it, you could take all the contents of this, put it together in a new way, you can get protection for your uh, expression of the same exact presentation. It's not the idea behind it that you're protecting, it's exact to the way that you've written it. So what can't be protected? And again, I'm gonna reiterate, you can only get the expression protected. So you can't protect facts, ideas, systems, or methods. Those last two you need to go and get patent protection for. Um, ideas, you know, there's just, there's nothing behind an idea until you make it concrete. And facts, everybody needs to be able to use the facts, so everybody gets to use them for free. So here's just a, an example, too, of how the expression changes. So I was out in Las Vegas and went to Hoover Dam and I took some pictures. These are two different pictures, but they're just slightly different. And so you get protection for both of them, not just you know, the idea of anybody standing there and taking that photograph. So how long does a copyright actually last? Well, there's some ins and outs that make this a little bit difficult, but generally speaking, and these are safe numbers to go by for you, consider that the protection lasts for the life of the author plus another 70 years. So if you actually do file for copyright protection, it's actually something you'd want to put in a will as well because your families might be able to make some money off of it. This is the reason that a lot of, say, Disney uh, works are still even protected. Now for anonymous works or pseudonyms or work made for hire, you get the longer of 95 years from publication or 120 years from creation. And so you want to keep track of when something is created and when it's actually published because the Copyright Office will ask these things. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, David, what is work made for hire? And you've probably heard this term a lot. And basically, it's anything that you're creating as part of your work. And here at the ranch, anytime I create something during my work hours, it actually belongs to the ranch. So this slide deck, to go back to that as an example, actually belongs to the ranch because I'm doing it my regular business duties. And so if I were to file this, I would actually make the, uh, the owner, the uh, Eureka Institute, which is our group that owns all the actual property. You can also have especially commissioned works. Um, so if you were going to hire somebody to take, say, photographs at an event for you, you would make that a work made for hire. And here's the little caveat on that, is you want to make sure that it's in writing in advance. You can't do it later. You need to do it before the, the work actually is done. And you need to use the words work made for hire. So if you hire, say, a photographer, make sure that you do have in writing that you will own everything as a work made for hire. And just basically work made for hire, consider that the author is the employer because the author is the term that the copyright office is going to use whenever they're actually asking for who the owner is and the original creator. So in your rights, when you get a copyright, it gives the owner the rights to reproduce the works, prepare derivative works. Um, an example of a derivative work would be uh, a couple of years ago, there was a big show on Broadway called Wicked, and it was actually based on a book that was based on The Wizard of Oz. And so there are actually two derivative works there. There was actually the book that Wicked was made off of, plus the musical. And so the actual owners of The Wizard of Oz had to give permission for that. Uh, you're allowed to distribute copies, whether it's, you know, it's books, uh, records, uh, movies, as long as you are the original owner, you can distribute those and you can distribute them for free. You can charge people, you can rent them, you can do whatever you want, it's your property. And you're allowed to perform the works publicly. So it'd be a matter of actually displaying, say the art, if it's a sculpture or a painting, uh, if it's a movie, you could have it distributed however you choose. So you're probably kind of wondering at this point, why should I even register? Um, because actually, uh, you can put the copyright symbol on anything that you create yourself. So you can put that little C with a circle around it and your name and the year that it was created or published there at the bottom. You don't even have to file to do that. Um, but in actually filing and registering, that allows you to bring a lawsuit for infringement. And there can be very large statutory damages of several thousands of dollars per infringement. So 
let's say somebody goes and steals my picture there of Domino before, um, and I've registered it, if all of a sudden I go to some, say, some pet dog food uh, website and I see that, hey, this picture of Domino is all over the place, every single time it's displayed on there, I can sue them for a separate action of uh, infringement. And infringement is not an intent crime. So you can't get out of it by saying, I didn't know. So here's what you probably really wanted to see today is actually, how do I file for this, David? And I'm gonna show you, it's actually easier, I think, than filing for a passport in the US, which I think is a fairly easy process. So if you wanna follow along here, I'm going to change screens. And we're going to go to the actual Copyright Office website here. And I'll go full screen for you, so you can see exactly how to do this step by step. And you'll see, first of all, you just want to go down to register a copyright when you go to copyright.gov. This is the only site that you can file uh, things from. And you're going to come onto this site, and yes, there's going to be a ton of words, different things on here that look really confusing. Um, keep in mind, it is the government. Um, so they usually try, don't make things look really great, but I will tell you their filing system actually works fairly well. Um, if you prefer to actually file for your applications on paper, right down here, you can actually just print out the forms. And so literary work would just be, say, a book, visual arts, that would be that picture of Domino that I'd, I'd use that form. And then different things for sound recordings, performing arts, et cetera. And actually, if you click on these, they give you an example, of, uh, all, actually all the examples of what can be filed using this. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna file on to, log on to ECO or over here. Okay, and uh, I have already logged in here before, um, so you can see it recognizes me already. Um, and when you come to this page, what you wanna do is just go right under copyright registration over here on the left, click on register a new claim, because I'm gonna go through as if this is just, you've never filed anything before and you're filing for yourself. And it's gonna ask you three questions just to kind of confirm. Um, and I'm gonna say, yes, I'm registering one work. And we're gonna, we're gonna act like we're filing this picture of Domino. Uh, the work is being registered, was created by one person. Yes, I, I took the photo on my own. And the copyright is, the work is solely owned by the person who created it. Yes. If you were actually filing this for your company, so it's a work made for hire, you're gonna actually put right over here I believe. No, uh, because the copyright is actually going to be owned in the name of the ranch. And you're going to get it sometimes, huh, didn't do it there for me. Or actually, pardon me, if I put yes on all of these, that's where it would be a work made for hire. You're going to get this important notice that comes up. And it's going to tell you that this is a not actually eligible because it's a work made for hire. If you look right here. And they kind of scare you and say, hey, don't use this website now, um, and instead print it off. Um, I will tell you I've gone through this several times, and I do it with the ranch things all the time. Um, you can go ahead and use this. Um, whoops. Of course, now I get an error. Um, and you can go through it, and they will take care of it at the back end. So go ahead and um, say that your company owns it. But we're going to say that I, I did it myself. Oops. <clears throat> and of course, we keep getting errors. Not good today. <laughs> Let me try and refresh this. Hey, we're failing fast and failing cheap today. Okay, sorry about that everyone. So you can see they're actually gonna show you where you are in the registration process over here. And I know it looks like a ton that you have to go through. Um, it's really not. They just make it look like it's a ton and there's very little information you really end up having to put in. So first of all, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna pretend again that I'm filing this picture owned by Domino or the, of Domino that I own. So it's going to be works in the visual arts. So I might just wanna confirm that and click on this and it's gonna give me examples. 
And so right here, visual arts, if you register pictorial, graphic, or sculptural work, well, it's a visual work, so this is a photograph. So I go down here to type of work and just click on work in the visual arts. Now, if this were uh, the slide deck for the ranch today that I'm putting up, I would actually make that a literary work because it's primarily words. There might be some pictures involved, but I would say it's a literary work. And then you just hit continue. And you'll see I've moved down one step over here and it says I've completed the type of work. So I'm gonna title this work Domino. And does this work appear in a larger work? I'm gonna say no. It's just a single photograph. And then you just hit continue. And you can name it whatever you want. Don't worry about trademark infringement or anything like that. You're just, you can, there is no protection for uh, titles of books and things. So, has this been, work been published? Well, I'm gonna say yes, because I've shown it to you today. So yes, it's being published. The nation, and you can see there's very few questions here you have to answer, they've marked them in red. So the nation I first public, published it would be the United States. And I took that picture a couple weeks ago, so we're gonna say 2014, and we're gonna say the date of first publication is today, since I just showed everybody who's watching this webinar, and I'm sure you're all loving Domino. So that's all you actually put on, put on here. Um, if you have more information here about, you know, that you have a pre-registration number, if you've worked with somebody before who has a pre-registration on a work that you're working through, you can put it in there, but really I would keep this very simple. Then again, just hit continue after you put in that information. Now it's gonna ask for the author. That's going to be me, I took the photograph. So I've pre-filled some of this since I have an account on here. I'm just gonna say, hey, add me, just to save us some time. You'll see, hey, there's my name. It just doesn't know I'm a citizen of the US and I live in the United States. Um, and then you can go ahead and put in your birth date if you'd like. Um, and then over here you'll see if this is an anonymous work or I'm using an assumed name, we'd mark these sorts of things. But since I don't have to put any of that in, it'll save us some time here. But what did I create here? We're going to say it is a photograph. And so then we'll just again hit continue. And then they're gonna ask for my information. I'm just gonna give them the ranch address here. I don't think any of you really want my home address. And the United States. So you can see, pretty easy. And we're already halfway through over here on the left. So um, if I need to limit your claim, so that means that it's based on something that's previously been registered or published or not owned by me, I'd need to put that on here as well. So if I were using, say, somebody's logo on that photograph as well, and I didn't own that logo, I'd probably wanna go on there and say, yes, there's some 2D art on there, and it's actually owned by the ranch, but I actually own the photograph. Um, you can do that. But again, we're, we're keeping this real simple today um, because you know, obviously the photograph's just a single shot that I took, and then if you're writing anything, most likely it's, it's going to be the same thing. It's gonna be your original expression, all your own. So I'm not gonna to have to worry about any limitations here. Rights and permissions, so who do I want people to reach out to if they actually wanna use this picture of Domino? So I'm a pre-filled all of this. And otherwise, there's not a whole lot you have to put here. You can skip this part if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, if somebody wants to contact me to be able to use it, I'm more than happy to. Again, correspondent name, just where do you want the Copyright Office to reach out to, aside from the rights and permissions. So if they have any questions about your application, you put that right there. And again, I pre-filled it. And then this one's kind of important. Where do you want them to send the original certificate when you get it? Um, amazingly, you're not gonna get an electronic registration. Uh, the copyright uh, or the patent and uh, trademark office, you'll get some electronic uh, notices on that sort of thing. You don't with the copyright office. You are just gonna get something in the mail eventually. So we're gonna say, hey, contact me. Um, 
It's asking for an organization name, so I'm just gonna say Eureka Ranch. Hit continue here. And um, I don't have any special handling, so if all of a sudden you were in the middle of some sort of litigation or all of a sudden there were some customs issues on uh, bringing something into the country associated with this copyright, say it was, uh, and a good example of that might be if you were bringing in product from another country and you were actually copywriting the, the packaging and the design on the packaging, you might want to check that just to make sure everything's covered. Then hit continue. And then I'm just gonna certify, hey, yep, I know that I'm the owner, and yes, I'm willingly doing all of this. Just hit, con so you have to make sure you click that box, put in your name, and then they're just gonna ask you to review it all, and we won't waste our time here right now, because there might be some questions that we'll wanna go over. Um, but you just, you can see everything's completed here, and you can see there wasn't that much information that you had to put in. So then, you have to then add it to your cart. And you can see I've got some other test ones here that I put in under this account earlier. And you can see that the fee on this is $35. And what you need to do then is check out. And as soon as you pay the $35, they will then add you, ask you to upload uh, the copy of the copyrighted work. So all I'd have to do is upload a copy of the photograph of Domino. And then it would probably on something like this, um, several months, uh, they'll, they'll get back to you if there's an issue. Otherwise, they will just send you a registration and then you're good to go. And again, then all of a sudden, I'd wanna keep track of that because who knows, maybe 75 years from now, long after I'm not here, um, somebody would wanna take that photograph and use it, say, on some pet food label. And so I would want one of my heirs actually get the ability to make some money off of that. So I'd actually want to put it in my will. So you want to keep track of these things. Um, you can see then on these test ones that I did yesterday using this account, you can see there's a different cost here. And you might be asking why. Well, when I went through those examples, and it was just a bit more complicated, so I didn't want to waste everybody's time here today, that is because I set it up as a work made for hire. And so those were where I was creating it and then the ranch actually owned it. And so what it does is it drives up the cost. Um, that's not to sway you from doing that if that's the case. Um, you, know, you should always make sure that whoever the true owner is, uh, is listed there. And so, you know, like when I file for the protection later today on this webinar, because we're now recording all of these and we make sure we get protection for that, I would upload that and it cost us $55 rather than just $35 with the simple one that we did here where it was a single owner, single author, uh, and just an individual. Um, and uh, let's see, and that's, that is pretty much it, pretty easy. So if we have any questions here, I will go over those, let's see. Okay. Okay, uh, good question here. Um, asking how long is, does it really take the Copyright Office to process these? Um, right now, it takes about three to five months um, if you're doing it online before you hear back from the Copyright Office. If you're doing it by paper, and um, you might remember when I first went onto the Copyright Office uh, site, I pointed out how you could print out the forms. They're taking about 13 months right now to review those, and that's actually because it is somebody sitting there by hand going through every single page and making sure everything is correct. So that takes a lot longer. So if you can use this system, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, yeah, let's see, okay, and we went over cost. Okay, here's another question. Okay, very good question. How can you monitor infringement of copyrighted works? Um, the best thing to do is actually reach out. There are several organizations out there like Thomson and Reuters where you actually pay for somebody to watch. And so they actually have somebody at the copyright office that goes through the stacks periodically, looks for any, anything. Otherwise, it's kind of left up to you. And so here at the ranch, we're constantly out there monitoring. We've got Google alerts you know, for certain terms. So we go out there and find out, okay, is somebody actually using any of our materials? Uh, and if so, then you know, we usually send them a nice note first and just say, hey, I'm sure it was accidental, but 
um, shouldn't be using our work anymore. Um, and then if we have to, you know, we do have to be a little bit more uh, difficult to work with uh, in order to protect our works because if you're not out there protecting your things, um, it's basically saying that anybody's allowed to. Um, and along the lines of monitoring, you know, what else can you do is make sure that you work out, work out with your IT people that a lot of your materials can't be downloaded from your website as well. So we try to be very careful with, like, say, our videos and a lot of our slides and other things that they're just not open for anybody just to download and use however they want. We want to be very controlled about those materials and, and your company and organization should be as well. Let's see. Have more questions here. Okay. Um, you know, can and this one is actually can a single product or I guess uh, have more than just one type of intellectual property? And actually, yes. Um, most products are going to end up having copyrights patents and trademarks all in a single thing. So you've got to think of each of those types of intellectual property discreetly. So think of uh, trademarks as just protecting the logos and the names associated with the products and service. The patent would might be more the system and then the, um, the actual uh, writing on the package and maybe the design itself would be protected as a uh, copyright. And so a really good example to think about right now might be the Coca-Cola bottle and when you buy a Coke, um, the actual contents itself, the formula is a trade secret. Uh, Coca-Cola has tons of processes on actually uh, filling that can that are, they have patents on. Obviously the logo of Coca-Cola and its name are trademarked, but then the actual design on the can itself would then be fall under copyright. and. Uh, even if the uh, artistic look of the can, if it were different, they could even protect by way of a copyright or a trademark. And that's where there's kind of an iffy area because uh, like the Coca-Cola bottle is actually protected as a trademark. So the idea is every time you see the uh, cocoa bean shaped bottle, you think of uh, Coca-Cola, um, but they could also have done that with regard as a copyright because it's a 3D or yeah, 3D uh, sculpture. The reason they probably did a trademark instead is because uh, trademarks can last forever. And as I pointed out before, copyrights do end eventually. So let's see, we have another minute or two here. Let's see if we have another question that we want to get to. A couple of them here I'm trying to filter through. Okay. Okay, more kind of on uh, works made for hire. Um, people asked here something about how do they know whether or not it's really owned by their company or not. Um, first of all, if you have a contract with your company when you started working there, it really should be in there. Um, if not, uh, what happens is that a judge eventually would look at it and say, okay, is this really the type of business, you know, what you've created, is that the business of the company that you're working with? Did you do with this on company time? Did you use company materials? So they're going to go down kind of a checklist. And so you just want to think through that before you go and start filing things as your own that really would be owned by the company. Um, and so they'll weigh that out. Um, similar to, uh, you've probably heard the term fair use, and uh, judges will actually go through kind of the same sort of thing where they'll go through and, and question whether or not something uh, really falls in line with the company. Um, so you wanna just make sure that you've worked that out with your company and your organization before you start filing things. And oh, and one more here, this, this is actually a very good one. Um, People uh, said something about what about a poor man's copyright where they can just like take whatever they've written and put it in an envelope and mail it to themselves and they get protection. Um, I can assure you that that does nothing. Um, the Copyright Office even has a notice on their frequently asked questions about it and just spend the $35. Um, it's the only way that you can get into court. Uh, you cannot file for a copyright uh, infringement suit unless you filed for registration and you registered. So if you just mail it to yourself, it doesn't do any good. So just spend the money and do the right thing. Um, 
And then if you have any more questions, obviously feel free to reach out to me at any time here at the ranch, david at eurekaranch.com. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Um, you know, if you're really getting into, you know, needing some real legal help, uh, I'm happy to put you in touch with some uh, attorney friends that would uh, be able to help you out there. And then before you go too, I just want to point out some upcoming events we've got going on here at the ranch. And uh, we've got Innovation College coming up, so that's going to be a fun week here. Um, long days. Um, I've got some webinars coming up on, on Monday, October 20th. So we're going to be, be down, not uh, as busy showing all of these here soon because uh, we've had too many recently. <laughs> we've been pretty packed. Uh, we're going to have getting everyone aligned on innovation on October 20th. And then I will be back on the 27th of October and talking about what's patentable and what is not. So that's a good one for a lot of people who have questions about whether or not they should be pursuing protection on different things. And then we have the um, uh, executive program coming up on Thursday, November 6th and Friday, November 7th. Um, that is an awesome event that uh, I really encourage people to try and get to uh, or send friends or clients. It is an amazing, amazing overview on innovation engineering and how it can work for you and your organization. Um, and if you can't make it to that one, feel free to reach out to us. And you know, we're happy to do private ones as well. It's just, it's such an awesome event. So uh, with, with all that, um, please uh, have a great day. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at your convenience. Take care.